Hello and welcome to T-Box Talk, a brand new podcast brought to you by Almada Golf. My name is Andrew. I'm joined today by Josh and Will. Uh, today's segments, we're going to do some Almada Reacts, Show and Tell, The Podium of Essentials When Golfing with Friends, and then we're going to wrap up with some behind the scenes and Almada stuff. So really quick, before we get into anything, I really just kind of want to you know, talk about what, the, what to expect from the podcast. Um, we're going to be testing a lot of cool stuff out, some different segments. Uh, we all, you know, well prepared for the podcast. So if you guys want to talk about, you know, what the goals are for this and, um, you know, where you see it going. I think the goal, the major goal here is for us to just have a, a space for us to talk about the things that we usually talk about at work. Um, they're all relevant topics, whether they're golf related or not. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, we want to put something out there for everyone to know what's going on here and uh, give some give the people some entertainment moving forward. I'd like to note that we live in Cumberland, Rhode Island, uh, and it's dark and, and cold for about, what, six months out of the year, seven, eight months out of the year. So for us, this is like we, we try to have fun all the time in our office, and this is a com- kind of coming to life. So I'm pretty excited to bring this, and I think that our segments are going to be grow and be absolutely fantastic as we move forward. Yeah, and like the vibe around our office is that we, uh, you know, Half the day, we're kind of just bullshitting with each other anyways. So we kind of like, you know, why not get into the podcast world? You know, why not do it? There's uh, so many great things that can come out of it. I think we're all pretty entertaining. I think we all have funny, unique takes to make. And we're going to do it. I think there's one more big thing, too, is that we also, being a golf company, we're intertwined into the major golf network and the golf industry and whatnot. So we have a lot of insight to bring on current events and things that are going on within major major companies and major profiles and people all across the golf space. So I think there's a lot to be brought here. So we're going to move on. We're going to do some Omada reacts. You know, I tasked the boys with collecting some viral clips, you know, one golf, one non-golf, um, or, you know, whatever they found, but that's what we tried to do. Yeah, I did two golfs. All right, Josh did two golfs. Thank you, Josh. Um, so <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to play them up on the TV. We're going to overlay them onto the vidcast for you guys and, you know, get some live reactions. You know what, Josh, because you decided to speak up and, you know, you're so adamant about your golf clips, <laughs> we will start with yours. We are watching the video as a kid. He's uh, hit into a golf net. Looks like there's a kid on the other side. Oh, oh. my God. Oh. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. I, this, I knew it was going to be an injury. This video. has been viral I, everywhere. Everybody is. Po- I've seen I gotta this. I got to see everywhere. that again. First of all, what is that kid doing on the other side? That makes no sense. That's like worse than taking a scooter to the ankle. This is so stupid. Look at the... Oh, my God. All right. My first initial thoughts on why I chose this video is like, what what are you doing? (laughs) Why are you you hitting at each other through like what looks to be like a $20 net on on Amazon or something? Like, you're literally... I feel like it's just one of those videos where you see it and you're almost like, I feel like they wanted this to happen. Because this is so ridiculous. It's like his little brother, honestly, imagine his little brother could have gotten clipped. If the he head. Had, the yeah. head. This is, a, this is. Look at where this first ball lands. I mean, like. He's lucky with a broken foot. Look at where this ball. Like, if that had broken through the net, that kid is dead. Straight up. And this kid just escapes with. Oh, a, you're right. Because it goes right in front of his face. The trajectory was perfect. That's what I'm saying. And then this kid, I mean... I mean, this just goes right under the net. Worm burner, though. Oh, it went under the net. Yes. Oh, see, when I watched it, I thought it went right through the net. No, it went under, because they clearly didn't peg it into the ground or anything. I mean, looking at the quality of that net, it, it's entirely possible that the ball could have gone through the net. That's well. the thing. No, it goes right under. Look right there. There's like an opening. Well, why? Why are, you, why are you hitting into each other? What's the benefit of this? Just take turns. Yeah, <laughs> just take turns. <laughs> that, that's that's it. a great point. I, I, there's, there's absolutely no reason to be doing this. That is insane. I hope the kid's okay, but you know what? Sometimes stupidity is. He almost deserved it. That's just stupid. That's just really stupid. It's the way she goes. Josh, move on to your second clip here. So as I pull up the video into a full view, I can just see a guy trying to hit a flop shot over a. 
Other gentleman. Oh, you know what? Looks good. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I need he, to shinned hear that. he shinned it. He shinned it. I thought he got it under him. No, just for the record, I've been that guy. If you remember back with Kevin doing this over me, I can't. The, the reason I picked this is because I know that fear. I know that feeling of being that guy, and it's not a fun feeling. I and would. he clipped. <laughs> I mean, li- oh my God. <laughs> oh, that's just. So Josh uh, thinks pain is funny. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's the vibe I'm getting from Josh's videos here. I would not well, put myself in his position unless I'm wearing a full suit of armor. I mean, it's, it is. It is funny, but yeah, you're right. Again, this is another one of those videos where it's like you feel bad that that definitely hurt terribly, but, you know, that's just stupid. Wait a second. Go back. Go back for a second. Is he using... Those are uh, practice balls. Oh, no, that's definitely a real ball. Like, that's a a real ball. ball. Yeah. I thought maybe for a second it was... I want to debunk some of these videos because sometimes I feel like they're staged, and this is like... If those were soft balls, then it wouldn't be anything, but he's definitely getting clipped. I mean, you know, take... Pop one of your headphones off and listen to it. Yeah, right. It's got the hit. I already... I heard it. It's loud, and it looks terrible. Props to that guy. It's, It's scary being in that position. Yeah, it is. Props to that guy, but again, you know, you can only feel so bad. Because that's just stupid. They've just walked themselves right into it. I guess. All right, we'll go to Will's clip next. Click some audio on. (laughs) Guy chugging some tequila, looks like. Oh. Oh, my God. No way. <laughs> he must have been coming in hot. <laughs> so to explain the audio, the the video for the audio listeners is this guy in the opening of the video is chugging some tequila. Chugging some tequila looks like it's a very respectable poll. It's I mean I can't drink tequila at all. And then the next clip just cuts and the golf cart is off a bridge into some cliffs. <laughs> <laughs> And there's some blood on the arm. There's a guy down there. He thinks he's going to fix the cart, it looks like. He's How are they not, not dead, dude? I don't know. You always see these videos and you're like, what's the what's the aftermath? What's the real effect, you know? And like they, they were in good spirits, all things considered. Yeah. I mean, I actually can't find this guy again, though. Is he the guy that, I mean, he's definitely the guy that crashed. Maybe he's actually hurt, which, you know, that would be terrible, but. No, that's him. That's him right yeah, there. Yeah, that's him. He's yeah. living large. Oh, no, that is him. He's got a little scrape. Oh, no, he got hit, though. He got a little scrape. A little scrape on the he arm. got a little scrape. I mean, they went into a in just a ravine of rocks. I mean, how did he walk out of there with a little scrape? Just a small flesh wound. That is that is hilarious. Oh. I'll you know, say, when I, when, I played, when I watched that video for the first time, I was certainly expecting something like that, but not of that, that extent. At least a marsh or something, but like a cliff, you know, a cliff. I was expecting puke. I'm not going to lie. I was expecting puke right off the That looked like a puke video. I thought a puke was coming up for sure, but I guess not. We actually had something like that happen where, uh, we won't say the name, but one of our friends is just, you know, he had a couple drinks on the course. We took a corner too quick, and he was just in a thorn bush, in a marsh. And like, (laughs) one kid was just tangled up inside the thorns, and... It was hilarious. Yeah. Nobody was hurt. The cart was not damaged. And we were able to, I think Josh just used some brute strength to pull it out, actually, which That's was pretty true. funny. That's very true. I went full Hulk, and I <laughs> brought them back to safety out of the thorns. I just don't understand how people do it. Like, right. you know, like, how hard is it? I see videos like this all the time, and I think, and first off, is the golf course, like, what do they do? You know, when this happens? like I think you don't tell them unless you have to. Are they bringing a crane out there and... Yeah, I mean, if if you don't have to tell him, you know, if if you can Hulk, if you can Hulk pull the uh, the cart out of the thorn bush, then it's true. I that one wasn't damaged, but like that one in that video has got to be destroyed, right? That's broken. Like I yeah, would be I gotta, curious. I gotta go back to that. That like because that's a good point. I want I want to pause it on the absolutely destroyed cart because I want to see the aftermath. I want to see the golf course react. Unless this is like a privately owned 
there's so many videos like that where like I just wish somebody was recording the next five minutes, you know? Yeah. Like that card is destroyed. I mean, it's got to be, maybe it's his own personal cart. I, that's what I was thinking was like a lot of the southern states. It's got like 20 inch own. rims on it. I know. That does not, that's not a golf course car. And if it is, it's like one of the nicest golf courses in the country and who gives a shit? <laughs> Like, yeah, I mean, those are like chrome rims. You get a free golf cart with your membership purchase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, isn't that a big thing in Florida? Like you said, like a lot of people own, the people that live on the golf courses own their own golf carts. Yeah, like they, there's like bordering neighborhoods all around the golf course. You buy a house and then you can just drive it to the golf course and like around the, on the streets. Like when I went to South or North Carolina and we played, no one was... Most people didn't even drive by car. They drove by golf cart. Yep. It was like a golfing community. My uncle lives in the, in the villages down in Florida, and that's the first thing you do when you get there is you buy a golf cart. You, you like, can drive to dinner. You can drive to shopping. You do everything by golf cart. That's awesome. They, like, trick them out and stuff? Yeah, you can. There's actually, I think, I think there's, like, a $3,000 attachment to one of the golf carts out there. I saw it one time. And it's a, uh, it's a portable AC system. So you actually, it's like a big cooler block that goes into, I don't know where, I think it's, it physically has to be attached to a golf cart. Like, I don't think you can just throw it in the, one of the, you know, the, like the little, the racks in the back or anything like that. I think it's like a physical, almost like a towing latch. And you put, you fill it up with ice and it takes their tubes, like literally ventilation that runs through the golf cart and like just puts AC on you. I'll find a picture of it. You find it. You, you get it to us next time. We're, uh, we're going to move on to Will's next clip. Looks like a TikTok. Hey, got something new for y'all. I am super proud of this one. I put about 13 hours I have no idea what this it. is. It's got six this tissue paper? Just wait. Well over 100 modern Shibori or Kenny style ties on it. It's an abstract design that I'm what? going to call the Mega Multiverse Combo. It's got over 10 different colors that I mixed myself, and it took about six hours to dye everything. So all in, this dude the is putting 19 hours into this. Take quite some time to do. To oh, my God. From each petal. Yo, what? I think it was worth the time and patience I put in for sure. Oh, my God, dude. That's like the coolest. That's the coolest tie-dye shirt I've ever seen in my life. Dang, right? that thing was badass. Wait a minute. So is this a T-shirt? Yeah, that's a T-shirt that he's rubber banded in a very strategic way to give him those medallas. I think they're called <laughs> medallas and shapes. How much does it go for the shirt? I don't. I honestly, I don't know. I I've mean, seen this guy's videos. One -one. Yeah, I mean, I've seen this guy's videos before, um, but it's just unreal that like that just looks like an absolute mess. Whoa, dude! I thought you were. I thought it was gonna be like hair. I thought it was like, or like used tissues. Or that is in that is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. That is really cool. That is incredible. See, I wish I had talent like that. I think they go for like a hundred, two hundred dollars. Those shirts got to right. I mean, he put in nineteen hours on it. That's wild. That's not even including the cost. What has he and got the shipping for all that? See, that should this should have over a million likes. That that's crazy. I mean, I'm sure it has over a million views, but like this this guy it does. Should it be. has nine hundred and thirty k likes. Yeah, I, I, that, I should say a million. That's know. like 50 million views, dude, or like 20 million Yeah, but there's a views. lot of stupider shit out there that's getting like 20 million likes, not views, you know? I don't know that I feel all that bad for this guy. I think he's doing all right. I would take 930 I, likes. I'll take 950,000 likes. He'll be okay for me. I just, this guy deserves more. That's all I have to say. This guy <laughs> deserves more. I'll right, move on to my, so I got a golf clip first, and then I have my one of my favorite YouTube videos that's not popular and it's the best video ever. It's not what you're thinking, Josh, but. So this is uh, Tobacco Road. I found this. Um, this is just something that would happen to me. You know, I think it's hilarious. And we're also going to get away from pain the here. Yeah. Oh, that so <laughs> it hits a good Got flop it shot. It gets all the way up to the green. Oh, and then just look it. at this. Just See you later. That's wicked. Should stop right there, right? Nope. It's going all the way back down. <laughs> <laughs> and he knows it. Smoking a stogie. <laughs> the smoking the stogie part is pretty funny. That's crazy that it came right back down to exactly where he was. But like, it's not that bad of a shot. Like, look at the shot. 
boom, it's up there, it's up there, lands right there, and then it goes all the way back down. That's that ground's got to be, like, rock hard. Tobacco Road is a, uh, that's a popular course, right? Like, that's a famous, is it actually Tobacco Road? Who knows? Like, I don't know, like, if it's just, like, a TikTok it's got to be. It definitely is. I, I don't know the course. Was, I've heard of it, but I, I don't know. I, I just know it. it's a famous course. I played it in the video game all the time. Two shots, for the, two shots for the price of one. <laughs> and then my second clip, non-golf, is this video only has about... I'm going to preference this first. I know we said we weren't going to do that, but this video only has about 2,000 views, and it is one of my favorite videos of all time. And wow. It, it's pure pain. That's crazy. It is pure pain. Josh, I've definitely showed this to you before. 2000, no way this has 2,000 views. Look, look. Yeah, it's posted by a different person. This video has... No, no, this is the only... Well, the, oh, the video definitely has views. I think it, I first saw it on Ridiculousness, but this is the guy's original... Yeah, this, yeah. this is the original video. You know, it's oh, me at the Hollow a couple of years ago, my mate, and this is what happened. Like, this guy just posts, like... Bicycle and BMX videos. Wait a second. That might even be more impressive than the video. How is that possible that this has two, this only has 2,200 views? It was posted in 2012 and has been featured on like every single. Because people probably reposted it. It's just like one of my original YouTube videos that I love is Super Mario Frustration. It's the only video on that guy's entire channel. And it has like over 50 million views or something like that. And he never posted again. And the video yeah. came out years ago. But Will, have you seen this video before? This does not look familiar, no. Okay, so I would love to get your reaction. I, I would suggest popping a headphone off to hear it. So first of all, this guy's just sick at BMXing. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the greatest. It's the greatest fuck I've ever heard in my life. Like, <laughs> honestly, the the landing was smooth. It, it was very smooth. Not on a bike, but it was smooth. <laughs> he just like dead fished it, dude. He's, I mean, he's out cold. He's out. Is cold. he really? Look, he doesn't move. He must be. I don't know, dude. He didn't really hit anything. He's just kind of like. I feel like it's it's natural human no, instinct. No, he's, he's not out cold. cold. He, not we out. we got an elbow flare. He's alive. <laughs> he could have woke himself back up. <laughs> confirmed alive that's like that that's like the worst moment ever is right before you know you're about to eat shit and then like you can see it happening live time but like you just have to go through it no matter what yeah yeah it is it is absolutely hilarious. that's a great one time just moves so slow because you know the impending doom of pain is on you <laughs> all right so that's gonna wrap up the uh you know, viral Omada Reacts segment of the podcast. We're going to move into some show and tell. Show and tell, purpose of this, you know, me, Josh, and Will are all three pretty different people. You know, we all have pretty different interests. So I wanted each of us to take a couple minutes to shine something. You know, what uh, what's something cool that's going on right now that you have interest in that, you know, maybe we wouldn't? And, you know, why is it important to you? What's cool about it? So, Will, you can go first. Yeah, I got some links here for you guys. Um, I'm actually, uh, I love, actually, it, w it was kind of a new love that I found, but my parents bought electric bicycles about a year ago, and um, every time I go home, I can't, I'm like so excited to ride them. Yep. Um, but this is not an electric electric bicycle. This is an electric cafe racer that's currently in production right now in the U.S., and this is fully electric, um, and this is an actual motorcycle that goes up to, uh, I think, 80 miles an hour. It's got a 65-mile range. Wow. Um, and it's going to start at $6,500. It's made here in the U.S., um, but if there's no shifting required. It's all done on your handlebars, so it acts the same, essentially, as an electric bicycle, but it's a legitimate motorcycle you can ride on the road. What was the miles? A 65-mile range. So it's, it, is, it is low, and that's kind of like the feedback that they've been getting so far is that they need to increase the range, um, but obviously that comes at a cost with a bigger battery. But this is one of the coolest things I've seen um, yet. And I think I attached a... Um yeah, you did. One second. I, is this... Oh, here we go. Okay. First of all, this is sick. Is this going to act as um, 
Is this going to act as a moped, though? Do you think you're going to need a motorcycle license to have this? That's what I don't know. Um, I personally don't have a motorcycle license, but if it doesn't require it, this would be an automatic, not an automatic purchase for me, but it would deter me to purchase this over getting a motorcycle license and getting a motorcycle. What's the top speed? 65 miles 65 an hour. 65 right there. It was, so it's not really highway worthy. Right, but so like... So that's why I think I don't think you'll need a motorcycle license. Well, it's tough to tell because with... Uh, with like a dirt bike or like a moped or like a ruckus, anything 49 cc's and under, you don't need a motorcycle license. Correct. That's what makes a moped a moped. How do you yeah. judge that with an electric bike? I don't with know. No, with no engine. Right. Yeah, that is going to be interesting. I don't know how they're going to handle that. These are really cool, but I will note that one of the things that concerns me even more about this, as everybody knows, I'm a massive electric vehicle, personalized vehicle fan. I bought a one wheel. I have like, I've had like five electric skateboards. I'm obsessed. But one thing I'll tell you, they always, always lie. And for anybody that ever hears this or watches this, just know this. If you ever think about purchasing it, anything like that, they always lie about the max distance that they get. So yeah. whatever they tell you, I've seen companies that go as far as like 50% less, even sometimes 60% less. Because the thing is, is like the way they'll test it is from a marketability, they want to get the most out of the miles. So they'll drive it five miles an hour all the way till dead. And that's when they'll claim it can get 65 miles. My better guess is that this is probably going to sit somewhere around like 25 or 30 miles is probably what you'll be able to get off of it. But the point is, <clears throat> I'm sure that the battery is going to be small and that's going to be fast to charge. And I don't think the purpose of this is to be a motorcycle. I think the purpose of this is to be like a... A leisurely... Go around a beach town. Yeah. You know, I picture That's myself, dope. if I if I was to have one of these, I just pick my, picture myself, you know, we're from Rhode Island. I picture myself down in Newport, you know, driving up and down the streets, the shops, the restaurants, the bars, and I think it would be awesome. I think about it, like, I live, if I take the back roads home, I live 10 miles from here. It's, I, it's, it's just over 10 miles. But I think on, like, a nice summer day, this would be an awesome thing if I didn't want to drive. There's no need for me to drive my car if I've got nothing to bring in, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. I've always wanted a motorcycle. But on a 20-mile round trip, I could get it in, you know, I could get in and home on one charge. Yeah. I've actually thought about getting a moped before because, you know, it's only a few thousand dollars <laughs> and you don't have to, it's like less dangerous. You don't have to get, ins like, oh, actually you do have to get insurance on it, but you don't have to have your motorcycle license. I've always wanted a moped <laughs> and I've never done it. I think it would be hilarious if I was rolling around on a moped. I think it would be fitting. It would. <laughs> I want a moped. Will, I, I'm, I'm hoping this is a video of this thing because that would be sick. It is. This uh, is what I originally saw, too. This is it? Yep. Cafe Racer. Testing phase almost complete. Releasing to the public soon. It's so sick. This isn't, it's not in Kickstarter or anything like that, is it? No, no. This is no engine. And like, it just, it just looked, like, I, I've always been a big fan of the Cafe Racer style bikes. Um, what is Cafe Racer style? Is that like th this, like um, that, this look? The, yeah, it's the exact look of the uh, the old Soren right here. So the yep. old Soren is the name of it. What's the brand? Old Soren. Oh, old Soren is the name of the yep, brand. Yeah, Cafe Racer. That is sick. Yep. Can you pre-order them right now? No, oh. I I have like I put my email address in actually. Oh, get notified when pre-order begins. Yeah. Oh, that is really cool. So I actually just not to not to shift, and I don't want to do that. I just I just want to say that there is this something. There's this like big movement right now, obviously in electric technology, and like 50 car companies just came out with an electric car this past Super Bowl. Um, yeah, and they, literally every single I saw major the, car company in the presidential address the other night. I did see that they said a bunch about like the monies, the money that's being put right now into electric technology from GM and all these other big companies is astronomical. It's like the highest that's ever been put in any technology in the history of mankind, as far as uh, auto automobile uh, automobile. Automotive. Automotive. <laughs> Automotive. Yeah. Automotive technology. Okay. But my big thing here is it's funny you brought in a moped because the other day I was looking at one that was a, it's a personalized uh, snowmobile, but it's like one, it, it's the weirdest looking thing what, ever. It's like a dirt bike with like, like tracks on it basically. Yeah. It literally has one big track on it and it's this big movement right now. And you literally have like a snowboard on the front of it and it has a track on the back. Like, look up snowmobile. Electric, look up, it's electric. not a dirt bike. It's not a dirt bike. It's a snowmobile. Look up electric snowmobile personal. 
Moon bike. Moon bike. Moon That's bike. It. That's what it is. It's a moon bike. Let's check out a couple minutes of this. Uh, okay, I'm instantly sold. Ah. It's the craziest thing, man. Does it have to be ridden in the snow? Yeah, it's like a snowmobile. It has like a, on the front of it has a. Uh, it literally has a track in the built into the back, and the, oh, the stats are pretty on, good. That's sick. It's insulated too, so like the battery. Everybody knows that like electric batteries. They in the winter time, like my I've had an, I had an electric car for three years, obviously, and that car in the winter time would lose half of its charge, and it was because it wasn't insulated. So now, like so that technology is completely insulated. Can you buy these? Oh, no, reserve. Yeah, so they're not out yet. They're not out yet, yeah. Does it say how much they're, like, slated to, to cost? I'm going to guess around 10 Gs. 10? Yeah. Wow. That's a lot. Are you sure about that? Well, think about it. It's not, a, it's not a motorcycle. The track technology, the battery, the torque required to make this happen, to make this work, and also to get a decent mileage out of it, it's pretty substantial. Unless I got it wrong. Maybe I got it wrong. 8,500. Yeah, 8,500, so not... But then also, if you wanted to get the power pack or the fast charger, then you're easily spending... You're over 10 grand. Yeah, you're at least around it. But it's pretty cool. I mean, the whole concept of it is, like, if I was in a snow town, like, this would be, like... Imagine if you oh, lived yeah. out in, like, Alaska or something like that. Or I don't even know where there's snow town. Colorado or something, where it's snow, always snow. Like, even Vermont, New Hampshire in the winter and stuff. Like, this would be awesome, like... Yes, you're right, Vermont. Because people ride snowmobiles, like, as cars and stuff. There's a problem with it, though is that it can't really ride powder, like thick powder. It doesn't work on. Well, it's too small. Look at this thing. It, right, exactly. So there's kind of has, like, there's an ideal condition that needs to be real. Sorry, I didn't mean to, like, bring that up. I no, just that's, kinda, that was real. That's actually really cool. Kind of fits in. But, Will, old Soren electric motorcycles is your show and tell, and it looks incredible, and I can't wait to see how what they do with these. Yeah, I'm excited. You're definitely going to buy this. At that price tag, probably not. But <laughs> I'll, get a, I'll get a used one in like 10 years. You just use shop pay, you know, for four interest-free installments. Four installments of $6,000. <laughs> four installments. <laughs> shop pay. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. All right, Josh, you want to hit us with your show and tell? Yeah. So to me, this is like my favorite thing in the world. I think anybody who knows me knows that film is like my my number one thing I, I, outside of golf and all the things we do here. And honestly, we do a lot with film here anyway, but film is awesome. And I've been all, I've always looked for a platform to actually speak about my opinions on film and, and current you know movies and TV shows that come out. And recently, there's been an unbelievable showing of content. So here's what I'm gonna do. I put three thing, three film, three TV shows slash films. Um, on my show and tell. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to just give them a rating and just say basically which one I would say out of the three new that are coming out, which one you should watch. Go for it. I'm excited. Okay. So I think, and Andrew knows that there's a lot of controversy over this, just even within our friend group and all that. But I'm going to give my first shout out here to Peacemaker. Um, I John Cena and Andrew Andrew and I have been fans of wrestling since we were kids. But Seen John- SmackDown Live twice. <laughs> It really breaks it when you go in person. It's it's tough. The the ring is tiny. So as a fan, what's your opinion of John Cena? I love John Cena. I don't, I don't think people should take him so seriously when he's an actor. I think like some people are like oh he's you know he's not an actor blah 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 blah. Yeah no he's not an actor. He's just one of the most entertaining people in the world, and he made fake wrestling amazing for so long. Dude. And like, have you ever seen the video when he returns to he returns to the Royal Rumble a couple years ago and people went. Like it's the loud, one of the loudest crowd pops I've ever heard in my life. It's really? it's, it's incredible, you know. I, I like John Cena, and I don't think like I don't think it's fair to judge him as like a like a professional actor. Like that's not fair. Will, do you have an opinion on John? <laughs> I I I don't actually have an opinion on John Cena. I don't I don't hate him or love him. He also I mean does, I don't I, I honestly I would lean towards liking John Cena. I don't. I think I think you hit it the nail on the head that people need to not take him so seriously as an actor. Well, he's he is his whole brand is that he's a douchebag. I mean, that's like they literally. So ju- okay, all right. Let me get back. Let me draw this back to why I brought this up. Okay. So John Cena is featured. He's obviously the he's peacemaker, and you saw him in the DC movie with all of them in it. But in this one, they kind of make him into he has those same sort of douchebag qualities, but he's also pathetic, and that to me. 
is, if any reason, the number one reason to go see this. And his other people in the show are really, really funny. And I think it's interesting because it's a very different platform of superhero content that has nothing to do with Avengers and that sort of brand of very serious superheroes world ending shit. I think that John Cena has broken and John Cena and crew that had had worked on this have really broken into a new category of like the Deadpool era of comedy and superhero action content. So there's a lot going on there. Great. The, the R-rated superhero. Yeah, and I'm going to give this a 7-1. That's my rating for Peacemaker. 7-1, all right. Okay, my second thing. Really quick, on one more thing about John Cena. Will, to sway you, because I'm going to get you to love him. He, I think, has done the most Make-A-Wish uh, project. Do you know what the Make-A-Wish Foundation is? Oh, yeah, 100%. He has done the most Make-A-Wishes out of any celebrity, any athlete, celebrity, musician, anything. He does so many things for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. It's incredible. The videos are tear jerkers. John Cena is awesome. All right. So good job, John. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, and I would give it a seven, one out of 10. I'm, I mean, it's going to be on a scale of one to 10. I'm surprised this show has 8.5 stars on IMDb. And now I think it deserves That's- that maybe on IMBD, but here's my thing. Why I give it a seven, one in all the greatness of, the the quality of content, but also the comedy and all that. I do think that there were some lacking in actors, surrounding actors. I do think that like there are some parts that are sort of like I don't know, I, kind of unbelievable about the storyline. And overall, I just think that it wasn't. I don't think the storyline was that great. I just thought it was entertaining, and John Cena actually did a great job. That's why I gave it a seven one. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and before we move on, Josh, for the for the fans and for the people, this is available now. Uh, yeah, streaming. you yeah. can watch this on. This is HBO, which is interesting because all the DC content looks like it's going to be going through HBO now. Okay. Yeah, because they bought. Um, I think like didn't, but there was an acquisition. I thought HBO like partnered with DC or it's something. Very, I'm sure they did because that. Uh, think of it like this: Disney has Disney Plus to release all their content, right? Mm-hmm. Under the Marvel brand, under the Dis, uh, Star Wars brand, so they have that platform. But who does DC have? DC didn't have, never got acquired by anybody, like none of the streaming platforms, so they needed a partner. So HBO is where you can get all your DC content and pe- watch Peachmaker. It's also R. It's very prof- profane and bloody, violent, violent gutsy. Love it. Very. Um, anyways, uh, so my second one is going to be Vikings Valhalla. Now, this is a really good one because... Vikings Valhalla, I, I was a massive fan. I saw the original Vikings the night it came out, the very first one about Ragnar Lothbrok before anybody knew what the show was. And I instantly, I would watch this with my family on a week-to-week basis. It got kind of weird because it is kind of a weird show. Um, <laughs> In what sense? There's a lot of rituals that go on between Vi- like Viking culture, but it's, it's, I don't know, that it's not all historically accurate from like a timeline perspective or events, obviously, but there's a lot of really accurate and kind of like visual because yeah, i mean they would pillage towns and stuff right yeah like there's and a lot of rapey inclu- and pillaging yeah that includes a lot of bad things but there's also like the weirder stuff is the sacrifices like the human sacrifices to the gods and all the all the god there's all that stuff is just kind of there's like a seer and whatnot and he like tells you your future it's kind of like you've probably seen it in stuff like 300 where there's like weird it's it's that type you, you were the, in 300 where the girl floats and whatnot yeah 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 it's kind of like that okay. that kind of weird shit that, wow vikings you know aired for 7 years and maintained a rating of an 8.6 stars on imdb <laughs> that is that's very good and the thing well, with this show josh the original vikings was it super violent and gory? Because w- it was on AMC. Or no, it was on History Channel. That's right? correct, Andrew. Very good. So very perceptive. The, so they couldn't they couldn't make it because it was like just no. on at 9 o'clock. Truthfully, so. there was not the blood. There were blood. There was blood, but it wasn't. I'm not going to say it was super gory. They they got around. Like, like for instance, if a sword makes. It's not Game of Thrones gory. It's very different. It, originally, it was on History like they released it on, I think it's on history. I I'm think it, I think it stayed on History Channel the whole time. But now, but I now, mean, so now, so get this. So, history? and this is this is really important, right? And this is why it's on the top of my list because Vikings Valhalla came out as a Netflix original. That's what's that's what's making me really confused right now. So this is an entirely new show takes place a hundred years beyond the very last episodes of the original Vikings. 
And I think that this is crucial because it totally picks a different narrative and it flushes out all the old characters and restarts. And I like that because the other seasons of Vikings, in my personal opinion, dragged on. I think Ragnar Lothbrok is Vikings. Everybody, and everybody knows his face. I can't remember the guy's ad, the name of the actor, but he is the king. And I guess what I'll say about this show, and I'll sort of wrap up my opinion of it, is that Vikings Valhalla, it follows the kind of the same Vikings stuff. I mean, it's like, it's still the rapey and pillaging, it's Christianity taking over, all this crazy shit. But like, ultimately, for Netflix right now, who I feel like is kind of dry on content, it's a great piece to watch if you enjoy history, like action, battle sequences, and drama, and uh, just intense sort of watching and viewing experience. I'm going to give this show um, a 7-4, because I think that, I don't think it's, I think it's sort of the same as The Last Vikings. It doesn't do anything all that different, but I do think that it's still a really quality show with a lot of great production value and it's really like it's a fun show so you enjoyed vikings valhalla better than peacemaker yes i did okay i think that peacemaker again there were a lot of those like corny things i think the story didn't really it was but i it's the comedy is what got him the seven one here's the thing those two shows they're good they're they're solid watches i would definitely tell anybody that has any any interest in superheroes or vikings or history to watch them this next show was one of the more revolutionary shows I've ever watched. Oh, I know where you're going with this. It's this show called Severance on Apple TV. Severance. Severance takes place. Um, it, it's more of a Black Mirror show than it is anything else. Mm-hmm. But it take the main actor is Adam Scott. Um, you may know him from Step Brothers. He's the brother from Step Brothers. Um, He's also from Parks and Rec. Oh yeah, big Parks and Rec guy. Yeah. Parks and Rec, Step Brothers, yeah, and. He's also from, uh, well, he's from a lot of stuff, actually. He's also done a lot of writing. But this show is completely serious. It doesn't have, it's not comedy, which is very different. So from an acting perspective, I think he's broken his own brand into going to do this. But also from a story perspective, it's essentially, and I think I was telling Andrew about this the other day, but it essentially um, is, a, is a show about people who come together to design this sort of work environment where you implant a chip in your brain as a worker there and you don't all your memories of your previous of your life outside of the office disappear so you basically have two there's two people and they're two completely different people because when you wake up in this office you have no idea who you are but all you know is so you basically are reborn as a person in this office and those memories are only encapsulated there and then everything on the outside world is a different person so, that's pretty crazy. That's a that's a new concept. Isn't that that's wild? That's fresh, yeah. It's very Black mirror It's yeah. very Black mirror I lo- And I was always wondering, like, this might be a good bridge in the gap between Black Mirror because Black Mirror apparently is not going to exist anymore. What? Yeah. Black Mirror got canceled? Um, well, I was reading an article that basically the, the director of Black, the creator of Black Mirror didn't think that it would be a... He, he basically felt like he was going to be losing his fandom because of uh, creating another series about a dystopian society would not bode well with the current affairs going on in the United States right now. Oh, wow. Hey. Yeah, we're, we've been living in a Black Mirror episode for the last two years with COVID. Right. Yeah. So, so I, don't, I don't mean to digress from uh, Severance, but uh, for someone who doesn't have Apple, because I assume you got to pay for a subscription to have Apple. Yeah, it's not too bad, though. I think it's only like four ninety nine a month. Okay. But for someone who doesn't have it, would it be worth it for this single show to get Apple? I would say it's pushing in the right direction. I also would say that there's about there's probably five or ten other good shows on Apple TV, and I don't think they have any intention on stopping. Okay, I'll tell you that the quality and the production level of this is as high as any out there. I would say that between between the sets, the acting, and then the concept of of this show, and the thing is, is like I, I'm so here's what I'll rate it. I think it's a it's a groundbreaking show, but it, like I've seen Black Mirror, they've done tons of episodes just like this. But I think the acting and the and the extension and story and time to develop with characters is far better in this than anything else. Um, and so what I'll say is, I think it's I think it's very worthy of an eight point six because I think that I don't think it's a nine because I think there it's in at times I think it can be boring. There's only been three episodes. That That's true. The next That's episode comes out tomorrow, I guess. Yeah. yeah. 
So, I mean, I feel like... You know what? Maybe that's fair. Maybe I need to... Let let the, let the show breathe for a little bit. All right. I'm going to hold it right now yeah. at an 8.6. But you know what I would suggest? I would suggest waiting for... It. If you don't have Apple TV and you're really interested in the show, maybe wait for it all to come out and then binge it all. You yeah. Because that's what I did. Yep. That's what I did for Boba Fett. Like, I, you know, had canceled my Disney Plus because, like, I wasn't really watching anything on it. And then I waited for all the episodes of Boba Fett to come out. Then I just watched them all at once. That's completely accurate. I would definitely say wait on any show like this. It's good information. I'm always looking for new shows. Might have to bite the bullet on Apple now. At, well, okay, if you're going to buy Apple, you have to instantly watch the movie Coda, C-O-D-A. Coda, it is my movie of the year. I think it's going to win the Oscar for Best Picture. Wow. It's also got 100%. Ted Lasso. I like Ted Lasso. I never watched Ted Lasso. It's pretty good. It's a feel-good show. I heard season two sucked. But yeah, season two was not nearly as good as season one, but it was. it's a feel-good show. You watch it. You don't get depressed. Like I, I'll just say, like as a not- I'll give a notable mention here, Ozark. And I, this may be to unpopular opinion. I've loved Ozark all the way through the third season. It bored the shit out of me. I actually didn't even finish the, sh- the show, which is maybe unfair of me, but it was well, just so... It, so I don't watch Ozark, but isn't it only part one of the final season? Season four is only part one. Is re- yeah. uh, Part two yeah. comes out in May, I think. I, I just hate, think I it's like this. Yeah, God, I could talk about... I, I personally, I'm on the other side of the spectrum with Ozark. I love Ozark. I wasn't blown away with the part one of season four. Um, this is what Josh's point. I think it does slow down a little bit. Um, but otherwise, you know, love those are. Do you think it's setting up for a massive release of the second half? Like it's going to blow people away? Well, I think uh, there's going to be, uh, well, maybe not this. I was about to say there's going to be five seasons, but that's Stranger Things. So I would assume that the second part to season four of Ozark will just like everyone's going to blow up or something. I don't, something big has got to happen. Well, see, I. <laughs> I, I personally hate when shows do that, and I'm a I'm a victim of this with The Walking Dead. I've I still every week have watched every episode of The Walking Dead since 2010 Halloween when it first came out. I have never missed an episode, and it is a chore to watch it now because they just every season was supposed to be 16 episodes. This season is the final season, and they're making it like 24 episodes, and it's like a part one. Part one already came out. They're in the middle of part two. And then I'm sure they're going to take another break for a couple months and part three is going to come out. Like, just end the damn show. I need to know how it ends. It's killing me. <laughs> it's, Everybody it's dies. Me. That's the end. It's Or, you know, <laughs> so, someone's going to come back. And, and they, you know, they're slotted to make three TV movies um, featuring Rick. And, like, it's just, like, there is so... And they've already almost... They've already pretty much spoiled the end because... Not in like a sense of spoiling it, but they announced they announced a spinoff show, which kind of means that two characters are guaranteed to survive, which are like two of the main characters. So it's like, well, what, why'd you even announce that? You know, like you yeah. could have waited till after it aired to do that. But you know what? That's what they do. The The Walking Dead has probably sold, I would say, a hundred million dollars in merchandise. Like there yeah. is, they sell so much merchandise. Probably more. The fan base is crazy. The Comic Cons are crazy for that. So I'm sure that this is a tough segment because, truthfully, in my head, I have like ten other shows that are brand new that are we could do a ass. whole podcast yeah. about. We'll we'll save sure. the we'll yeah. we'll even if it's not time relevant on the next one, we'll feature some other ones, good ones. But right now, my most my most pressing watch. If we're discounting all of sort of the Star Wars franchise, because it, if otherwise it would be Boba Fett. Um, but if not. If we disclude that, I'm going to say on my list right now, I'm going to say Severance is number one watch for me. All right. Josh, thank you for showing and telling. Um, so I'll make mine a little quicker. Uh, there's a new game came out. Everybody's Literally everybody's playing. It's called Elden Ring. It's made by From Software, which is the same creators as Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, Bloodborne. Um, and this game is it's literally designed to torture you. And it is the hardest game I've ever played in my life. It's without a doubt the hardest game I've ever played in my life. I have, so last night I checked, I have 19 hours played already in this game. I have, I've probably maybe beaten 2% of the main story because I've died over a hundred something times. (laughs) You're supposed to die. It's like, I'll show you a quick clip of me playing last night. Um, I like recorded it because I knew I was in the middle of a boss fight. It's literally the second boss fight. So like I'm early in the game. And the thing with this game is they don't tell you whether or not 
you should be doing something. It is, there is no mission, there is no guide, there is no nothing. It's just, they plop you into this open world and it's up to you to figure it out and it's incredible. But it's awful at the same time. It's, it, I'll, I'll let the, this little video speak for itself. Like, and it, it's longer, so I'll like fast forward it a bit, but it's also tough. I didn't really record that great because I was pissed off. <laughs> So the thing is, like, when you enter these boss fights, right, you see, so, like, there's a little gate there, right, and you have no idea, well, you know the boss fight is on the other side, right, but you have no idea if you're strong enough to beat him, so the only way to figure out that if you're strong enough is you have to die to him, like, 30 times, and then, like, all right, you know what, I'm gonna go do something else, I'm gonna level up, and then come back later. I went for two hours last night trying to beat him, just over and over and over. I'm actually really curious because he's been telling me about this. You, you know, you've been saying this for a while now, like over a week. You've been com- actually complaining about the video game that you're playing. Yeah, but I love. But <laughs> I, I love. It's gonna be second. mildly frustrating. <laughs> yeah. So the whole game, like, you can pretty much die in like two hits, right? So you have to like, you have to memorize every move, dodge, dip, dive, and dodge. Like he, so like I summon this chick to come in and fight with me, like. <laughs> Uh, this looks dope for the record. I mean, I, I know it's really hard, but this is pretty wild. It is it is incredible. It's like the game is it makes no sense why it's popular. Like it's not fun to play, but then at the same time, it's the funnest game in the world to play. It's also like the most satisfying thing ever. Like it's like this. They is, make you work for it. This yeah. is like another. This is a, this is a second job for you essentially. Yeah, this is where I die and <laughs> I get pretty I get pretty mad. So it's BS because you know I'm at full health right now. I'm at. I'm literally at full health up in the top left. And then just you do like one wrong thing, you get pinned into a corner, and it's over. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's it. That's it. How long does it take to defeat him? If all said and done, what's the time put in it on a defeat? I, I would, Not all the tries, just like on the actual try that you get it right, how long do you have to basically be consistently killing him for? It depends how good you are. Like if your guy's a super strong thing you can you know you can be done with the fight in four or five minutes or you can take it the slow route and you can really battle him for like 10 minutes and just like back away dodge a move block a move back away go in one hit come back out one hit and like you can fight the same boss for 10 minutes and then die at the very end oh, you know wow. and then do it all over again There's so no but saving. when There's you nothing. defeated him was it 12 minutes was it 10 minutes uh i actually so what happened last night so i i played for like six hours last night right um for the first two hours, I tried beating him because I thought I was strong enough, and I wasn't. And then I texted my brother, who's like a freak at the game, and I was like, hey, like, I'm really struggling. Like, What should I do? He goes, go, just go do something else. Literally, I sent him a picture of all my stats. He's like, you're not, you're not strong enough yet. Like, Go do something <laughs> else. <laughs> um, that happened to me in Halo, for the record. But, but the thing is, like, there was a bunch of times where I had him like one to th- two hits, you know, and then he would get me like, with this crazy combo move, and I'd be dead. You know, and it's when I tell you it's the worst feeling in the world, it's like the worst feeling in the world. Well, like I said, Um, there was that there's that one moment in Halo where you fight one of the bosses. And if you don't have enough shield, he will. It's impossible. You get one shot. Yeah, you get one shot. But then you can like you can get different weapons that get you right there almost to defeating him. And then right as you get there, he like finds you no matter where you're at and just kills you. Yeah. Like they don't, I think there's almost like a code in there that does not allow you to win if you don't have the proper credentials. Or unless you perfect it. Like unless you dodge every move. Like, cause there's people who beat him. Like my older brother beat that guy right away. Like he's wow. also just very good. And he's also very patient. I'm not very patient. Uh, so <laughs> last night I played for two hours trying to beat him. Couldn't beat him for two hours. I went, I would spawn, go into the room, die, spawn into the room, die. I did it for two hours. Like I was... I was almost in tears, like, (laughs) and I was like, screw this. I went around the map for a couple hours. I mean, because the map is huge. It's the, the, it's one of the biggest open world games I've ever played in my life and leveled up a couple times, went back right before I was about to go to bed. So what I was going to do is I was going to go set myself up at the spawn and then I was going to go home tonight and play and, you know, try for hours to beat him. So I was like, you know what, right before I go to bed, let, let me try one more time. Kicked his ass. Like I barely lost any health. Like. I was I was like OP at that point. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just shut my Xbox off and I was like, I'm going to bed. And this game is doing like crazy. So like you don't think people buy hard copies of games anymore. There's a report that came out over 5 million hard copies alone have been sold, which is that's, pe- here, really? that's people that's people that's people going to the store and buying the game. 
but they actually estimate the game has probably over like 35 million buys. You know, and at sixty dollars, that's I mean, that's it's a hundred million dollar game. It's three hundred million dollars in revenue off of hard copy alone. Yeah. And then forget hard copy. How about the digital copies that cost zero dollars to Are there any extras in the game? Ship? What do you mean? Like like Fortnite, you can buy skins. Like, is there anything else you buy with it, or is it just you pay? Uh, that? No, no, it's it's. There's no. I mean, I'm sure they'll release some DLC, but there's nothing you can buy to make yourself better. It's just a story game. So I know a lot of people that are talking about Elden Ring. So just for the sake of anybody that listens to this or sees this, would you recommend that they get it, or would you recommend that they push to other games like Star Wars Battlefront too? Well, Star Wars Battlefront 2 <laughs> came out like six, I'm playing it right now. <laughs> seven years ago. Uh, what I would say about Elden Ring is um, it is not for everybody. Like, I, like Josh, I know you told me when you tried to play Fallout 3, you couldn't even get out of the vault. So, like, I'm, I'm just saying, like... <laughs> if I was playing that game, my Xbox would be in the trash compactor outside <laughs> my apartment building no, in about 15 minutes. Trust huh. me, I have a two... So, I bought the Elite Controller, which is just like a Super Xbox controller. I paid $200 oh, for yeah. just the controller, and I can't tell you how many times it's almost been halfway through my monitor, which I also spent a lot of money on <laughs> because of this fucking game. But would I recommend playing it? Uh, yeah, I would. It's just uh, you might quit it within an hour because, I mean, that's not even the first boss. The first boss also I was stuck on for multiple hours and then I beat him when me and you were playing together and like I was screaming I was so happy like that's the thing with the game is like it'll punish you but then when you actually achieve something it's amazing it is absolutely amazing highs and lows a lot of lows to get to the high can't have the highs without the lows but the highs do outweigh the lows in this oh. game in my opinion in this game they do but you have to have super patience like I said I have 19 in-game hours logged and that's not counting me like shutting my Xbox off and just like stewing in anger for a little bit and then like turning it right back on and like trying again because <laughs> I do do that. All right, we are back after some technical difficulties and we're going to jump right back into the podium. So the way the podium is going to work, uh, podium, first place, second place, third place, that's how a podium works. Uh, we're going to do like lists. So today is going to be the podium of golf essentials when you're with your buddies not necessarily just you know top three things when you're golfing just you know the essential it's it's about the friendships it's about what makes golfing with your friends fun so we're each going to pick one i'm going to keep going till we've all picked three um and i guess we'll go right into it uh will you're going to lead us off here with uh your number one and then josh you're going to go and then me and so will josh me will josh me all right, so I got to go with my number one being app race, and app race is, literally means after, and it's like typically used in the skiing community for like grabbing a beer, grabbing a drink, grabbing some food after with your boys. Um, I think a great way to like look back and run down on the round is to pick a course that's got a great restaurant at it. And like I literally have a group of friends from Boston that will drive over an hour to Foster, Rhode Island, so that we can grab food at Tavern 19. And I got to say, it's got one of the best chicken focaccia sandwiches. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, I got to say it, it makes the whole round because you got something to look forward to. So even exactly. if you're, even if you're playing bad, even if you know, you're, you're 20, 30 over on your round, whatever it may be, if you got that chicken focaccia sandwich to look forward to after your round, you're not down in the dumps. How do you spell that word? Which one? Apres is A P R E S, and there's like a little like oh okay little hyphen on it. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a French word, I think. I've never heard of that in my <laughs> life. Have you heard of that? Uh, no, not even close. I just <laughs> I simply just call it an after plan. But if if Will's gonna get all fancy on us, he'll get all fancy on us. So Will's number <laughs> no, one. not even close. <laughs> it is a good. It is a good pick. I I actually like. I like. Uh, Having an after plan is always very important to me. Shout out New England Country Club for uh, uh, what's the name of it? Egan's Egan's, Egan's Pub. Pub. Egan's Pub is uh, amazing. See, it's like a it, it makes the difference in a round. Yeah. They have this one chicken sandwich that they do over there, and like I could, like it could all be just frozen, fried, whatever. But Andrew, correct me if I'm wrong. It like, hits different. It, it hits it's different, different man. It hits Egan's Pub, let's go. That one goes out to you, Mike Darren. <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh josh what's uh your number one thing um 
So I, I don't even need to look. My number one thing is for sure. Well, it's weird because it's two things. It's music, but also the the form of music I use. Like right now, and I, oh, pretty much for the last like four years, I go onto the golf course with the Kilburn Two, which is a Marshall like guitar amp speaker, but like it's like mini. And we'll show a picture of it right now. Um, but this thing is it's not even about blasting music on the course. It's one about having the potential to go louder, but two, the idea that the sound quality is so good. It's like surround sound in your golf cart, you know, or on your, you know what I mean? Like you couldn't use it with a push cart, but like if I'm going to go out and like drink beers and hang out and, and have fun on the golf course on a Sunday day and it's sunny out, like I'm bumping, you know, everything from country to, uh, to, uh, Anything. Reggae, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Literally anything. Yeah. Like maybe some slipknot. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put it past me. I would absolutely yeah. love to golf to some slipknot. There's definitely <laughs> some hardcore rock in there at some points. Yeah. I mean there has to be. It's just it, it gets the vibe going. I like to know too, just because I know a lot of people don't like music on the golf course. So like one, do the two of you guys like music on the golf course? And two, if anybody in the comment or section or that's watching this, um, do you guys like music on the golf course or is it bad I, I love music on the golf course i have no problems with it the only times i get a little anxious is when like there's like uh maybe if it's a busy day at the course and like i just get worried about what other people think but when you look past that it's awesome i'm all about the music on the golf course i think my like quiet on the tee uh match days you know those are those are long gone i left those in high school so yeah exactly you know if you're out on the course with your buddies i think tunes are a must um, I mean, unless, you know, you, maybe you got half the group that's not about it, but again, like, you know, it's, you're not blasting it. It's, it's really for, you know, personal and, you know, if you're in a cart for, for the two guys or, you know, for the other guy you're riding with. So exactly, exactly. And that kind of leads, you know, right into my number one, when, uh, when you're golfing with your buddies, it's all about attitude. You know, they're the, the one person in the group that is being a dick, like it, it, it can literally ruin the entire day. So to me, like with everybody having a good attitude is so important when you're golfing with your friends, good, positive attitude. We're not professional golfers. We're not, it's very simple. You know, pretty much we all are, you could say we're not great at golf, but, (laughs) um, but when everybody has the right attitude, when you're golfing with your friends, it can make the day a lot more enjoyable. Yeah. If you're a, if you're a leisure golfer and you're out there breaking clubs at 30 years old, I'm probably not going to play with you. <laughs> exactly. I'm probably going to cut you right the fuck out of my circle. Exactly. I, I, I couldn't say it any better. It just... I don't think I've ever intentionally broken a club. I've actually smashed like three drivers because I was doing baseball swings with them. Yeah, I don't know why doing the baseball swing always It's the flexibility, the and I think where I hit the ball was right at where the shaft meets the head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, Will, why, why don't you just uh, get out of Josh's uh, dirty mind here and uh, let's um let's go to your number 2. All right, let's see. Number 2. All right. So this one it is it's very particular, but I got to go with Dr. McGillagutty's nips. And they've got to be yep. I mean, if they're warm that's one thing, but they got to be cold. Cuz there's so many things you can do. There's so many fun games you can play within the game. With nips, yeah. I mean, like we, like we, like I said, those those group of guys I play with, Boston. You know, every time someone gets a birdie, everybody's got to rip a nip on the green. So if you have a really good day at golf, you know, you're you're, you're looking at you're looking at five to ten nips by the end of your round. You know, <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite flavor of that? Oh, I got to go with the wild grape. Okay, so Will has been telling me about these wild grape wild grape doctor nips, and I have never seen them before. So how the hell do I get them? Well, I mean, they're, you know, honestly, when I first moved to Rhode Island a couple of years ago, uh, I couldn't find anywhere in Connecticut that had them because I'm, I'm originally from Connecticut. But yep. Rhode Island had them at basically every single packy or liquor store, whatever you want to call it. They had them at every single one of them. So every time I went home to play golf with like my dad or some friends from Connecticut, I would have to buy them before I left Rhode Island. Now they're everywhere from what I see. But if you don't see That's them in display, always ask the person in front because they might have them like under the counter or something. Yeah, like I've had like, so like there's obviously the mint one and I've had the cherry one before and I despise the cherry one. No. I can't. Straight cough syrup. Yeah, it's, it's awful. It's awful. So I, and I do like grape drinks, so I will. I'm a classic. I, I, you, you like I, the mint one? Well, I mean, that's the only one I can ever find. The, I wouldn't mind. I, the, pepper one, the peppermint one is kind of like this elusive 
like the yeah. peppermint one White is harder Fox. to find than the wild grape. I've I've literally only had the peppermint once, and I can't find like that's one I can't find anywhere. That's the one I want, and it's like sort of that like that like white fox that like only comes around every once in a while and like maybe you see it maybe you don't like, like i definitely would like peppermint better than the what is what's the what's the green one is it spearmint menthol mint menthol yeah that ugh, they're not, very similar in taste but the peppermint is definitely it's a, it's that top tier i'm actually gonna mint. throw a wrench in this my favorite one is root beer. I hate, I don't like I root beer. I love the root beer. I killed beer. the root beer ones. I can't do the root beer ones anymore. I don't like root beer. What so about a 50-50 split? Like, like, what do you, like what do half you mean? root beer, half half menthol or whatever you like, grape. I mean, root beer and grape kind of go together. I mean, a little bit. The it, like more of the sugar. story is the root beer ones and the grape ones, they taste exactly like soda. Yeah. Just not carbonated. Yeah, right. Yeah. But like, the main, but the main thing with the McGillicuddy's is, and like I didn't say Fireball, and I didn't say Rumpel Mints or whatever you know other alcohols out there. Uh, but the McGillicuddy's is a perfect twenty twenty one percent by volume. Perfect. You're not out there slamming forty percent alcohol. So by the time you get to the ninth tee, you can't get out of the cart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely had a couple friends be there before. <laughs> I think we've all probably been there before. Yeah, and especially when you're like playing a competition and like your partner's just in the bag and you're just like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, so Josh, let's move on to your second one. So my second one has got to be Lion Google. Mm-hmm. Like I know, I, I don't, I, we, you know, unintentionally we're doing drinks right now, but like to me, like golf in the summer, like my pinnacle experience on a golf course is having a nice, and it's not like having like a tall boy shandy where it's just like off brand or like, and And I love gross at the end. Yeah, that's exactly right, Andrew. I need a cooler with the coldest lining kugel ever. Because lining kugel is that, it's that top tier shandy that no one's talking about. I mean, I literally, no shit, I bought a 12 pack of porch rockers, the Sam Adams shandy over last weekend, they were on sale. And they're not good. I mean, they're good, but they're they're just they're not on that same level as Lining Kugels. Well, can I be honest with you? Those are definitely out of date because I think they only sell them in the summer. But I could be totally it's wrong. Probably, right? It's probably why they were on sale. <laughs> yeah, because uh, <laughs> I don't think they sell those non-summer. But I'm not sure. But yeah, Lining Kugel Summer Shandy is, in my opinion, the best shandy. I think. What what other? So there's Dells, and then what? Well, Dells is I think is only in Rhode Island. Shock Top. Shock Top Summer Shandy is my second favorite. Shock Top makes like a Belgian white beer, but then they also do like a yellow box and they do the Shock Top Summer Shandy, which is awesome. It's not as good as Lining Kugel. Uh, and Lining Kugel also has other flavors, which aren't that good. It's just the standard Summer Shandy is the best one and it's not even close. So I got a question for you, Josh, then. So Lining Kugel's Summer Shandy out of a can or bottle? Bottle. So oh, not even a question for me. That's that's the correct answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you said that. Yeah. The only problem with the only downside is that if you're well, luckily we got the great push cart, the tri light here at Omada, but you know, if you're loading up a carry bag with six glass bottles, you're basically carrying around rocks. Yeah. Yeah, it is tough. It is I would tough bring a cooler, honestly, I think. It like or I bring a cooler or like I might, you know, I would probably, honestly, this, the Trilight has so much storage. I might like throw like four or five, six beers into that thing with just like an ice pack. And I mean, yeah, keep them cold. Like, But then like, then you have like the try hard starter who's like, empty the cooler boys. <laughs> and, you know. I, I had to be that guy one time. No, nah, yeah, that sucks. Yeah. That was the worst feeling in the world was going on a Sunday morning and like, like being forced by your boss to tell you to go to someone else's like foursome and they're like out there having fun and you got to walk over and go, Oh yo, what's in the cooler? Which isn't cool. They go like, come on, man. Like, yeah. Take a step off. You're 14 years old. Like, yeah. and that's how old I was. I was so young. It's like when you're like a freshman in college or like whatever. And the RA comes in and like makes you dump out your alcohol and watches you do it. Yeah. It's, I think it's more of a power trip in my opinion. Like, <sighs> Uh, maybe an older, maybe an older starter, but like honestly, that starter has a boss, and the boss is telling you what to do. That's true. That's true. But like, my whole thing is like, as a golf course manager, I would, if like being lenient, I know there's like a lot of legal precautions. Like, if somebody gets hurt on your course and they had snuck booze on, like, there's a lot of liability liability issues. But like, if you're lenient on bringing coolers out, more people are going to come to your course, and if you're if you're really strict about it, 
less people are going to come to your course, in my opinion. I think there's always a happy mix, too, because if I'm bringing beers out on a course, I always want to, like, buy a beer or a drink at the course as well. Yeah, for support reasons, yes, I would agree with that. Exactly. I would agree with that. Um, So we're going to move on to my second one, um, which is the right weather. Uh, When I'm golfing with my buddies, I, I, I need the weather to be perfect. Like, around here, so we're from New England, in April... You could get out there, but you might run into a 38 degree April day and it's, it's miserable. Like it hurts to hit the ball. And then in the peak of summer, sometimes it's like 98 degrees, a hundred degrees. And you're like, this is miserable as well. Give me a cool 65 to 70. And that is my ideal golf weather temperature. Everybody's in good spirits. Nobody is just dripping sweat. Nobody is frozen as an icicle. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, finding that sweet spot in the weather is, is is a game changer. I think it also, like, weather has a big thing to do with attitude as well. Well, exactly. I literally, I'm not kidding. I was literally, I, I was waiting to say it, and, it, like, you just took the words <laughs> out of my mouth. Like, because that was your first thing. My first thing is attitude, and then my second thing is weather. Well, makes sense. They go literally hand in hand, you right. know? It can, it can literally change the course of the entire day, of your entire round. Um and, like, direct sunlight for me is, like, I don't, I don't even mind a few clouds in the sky either. No, oh, I, I, I totally agree. It. Totally yeah. agree. All right, so I think we all we all like the weather pick. Uh, Will, let's let's go with your last one. All right, third and final essential for Will would have to be the pregame, mm-hmm. and I and I don't mean like you know you're slamming beers in the parking lot with your boys before the round, but um, you know just from a personal experience, there was a course, and they still have the same lady there making the same breakfast sandwiches. But there's a course back where I grew up in Connecticut called Twin Hills. And they made the best breakfast sandwiches. And so if it was possible, you know, myself and the other guys would show up, you know, 30 minutes, an hour before the rounds, sit there in the, the, the clubhouse, eat a breakfast sandwich, and shoot the shit. Because, I mean, you have to think, you know, outside of the tee box, there's not really a time for you guys to, like, you know, catch up and, you know, and throw some updates to each other. But, yep. you know, if you have that, that discourse at 30 to 60 minutes before the rounds, again, I think it's something that can change, you know, your attitude going into it. I totally agree with that. I, unfortunately, you know, when I'm golfing with Josh, he's always showing up five minutes before the tee time, so the pregame's always kind of out of the option. But uh, I, the very few times that we do, you know, get lunch before the round, it, it does make the round a lot better because, you know, you get in the mood, you know, because you don't have to waste time catching up. You've already caught up at the pregame. Now you can, like, golf and just have fun. I'm right? actually – I, I kind of feel like I don't swing as well if I eat, like, a big meal – before like i kind of like what he said because like an egg sandwich in the morning time is different because it's like it's quick it hits right home and you don't you're not overfilled but like having like a big lunch or even like multiple egg sandwiches <laughs> or like or like but just a bunch of stuff like i don't my body my swing tempo gets all off and not to get like all golfy here but like i also i like to hit the ball hard mm-hmm. like i like to swing and yeah, I don't know if I like it that much to eat before a round. I, I don't really enjoy it that much. Well, I think it's about eating the right amount. You know, if like a quick, like like you said, a quick egg sandwich. Like, but yeah. if, if you went and had like a full course meal, I think that, yeah. Well, like, would you eat at nine? If you played 18 holes, would you eat at the turn? Would you eat, if you could sit down and eat a lunch, would you eat a lunch at the turn? I get no. a dog. No, dog at the turn. You get a dog. Yeah, I get a dog at the turn. Oh, Put some right. relish on it. Beautiful. I if they got it. chili, maybe. It, it's a little messy, but. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're flirting. You're washing my hands before I tee yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, you're flirting a dangerous line. There. Yeah, dude, you get stuck out on the golf course after a nice chili. That's that's <laughs> <laughs> that's a little dicey. But uh, all right, Josh, how about your third thing? Well, my third thing is shamelessly uh, the Trilight sold by Omada Golf. Uh, <laughs> why? Because it's the best freaking push cart in the world with the best customer service and the best team at your back to help you play around your way. Uh, enjoying walking uh, the golf course. Um, we do a ton of discounts, and right now I'll just say that Omada 20, this is if you're watching this, Omada 20 will give you 20% off everything on our website, uh, omadagolf.com. And sorry for the plug, but I had to do it, boys. No, <laughs> no, man. There's never a bad time for a shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> Trilight is awesome, though, and so... Again, if you're watching, if you made it this far in the podcast, Omada20, we'll drop that code right here on the screen. Incredible. All right. Uh, so I, with the final pick, 
uh, all about the right course for me. Uh, and it, this actually goes into like our Omada brand is like, we're about golf for everybody. And when there's no worse feeling than when you and your boys show up to like a really preppy course and everybody just gives you that eye, you know, they're like, what the hell are these kids doing here? Get them out of our course. The right course goes a long way when you're golfing with your friends. It sets up the attitude. Like I talked, everything that I picked went right back to attitude. When you're when you're at a right course, the fun course, that's also like good golf conditions. I that is important as well. But the people that work there, if they're friendly, it, it just makes the day a lot more enjoyable. You're not on edge like oh, you know, is somebody watching me from the clubhouse right now? It's it it, it goes a long way in my opinion. I've been kicked off like four golf courses, and <laughs> if anybody's watching this, those of you who know who you are that were with me. Um, <laughs> We got charged by like an old man on a golf course, like like three different times in a row. That guy was awful. Though. Oh yeah, you were there with me, Kluge. Yeah, I was there for one of them. Yeah, but point is, is like they're right. Like it, it's not always about like you know the country club vibe. Sometimes it's it's actually quite the opposite. It's like sometimes like public courses, they can be really hard about certain things. Like that cooler thing, that'll kill your day. Like I love having a cooler. Yeah, if they yeah. dump the cooler, like after you've already paid for the round and like you're, you're walking up to the first box and they dump the cooler on you. It's like, whoa, like that just killed the whole round. Yeah, and, and as if, as if I'm not going to go back to my car and just shove all the drinks inside my golf bag. And that's <laughs> also, that, that is the golf course. Like, again, you can't blame the guy telling you if it's like the starter or something, that's the freaking golf course. Yeah. Like uh, there's some golf courses that don't care about it and they just like, they go on with their life and there's others that don't that do. <clears throat> yeah. So. Colucci just built his, pyramid of golf greatness weather good vibes course and attitude yeah it, Colucci's pyramid of golf greatness yeah it, Facts. It's, it's 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 why I go out and play I mean I don't I'm not good at golf I don't go out there to shoot a good score I go out there to have fun so that's why all three of my things they came down to having fun that's fact Colucci I, lo- I actually love your list I think I like your list better than my list well, I'm yeah, just, fuck my list. I'm just, <laughs> I prep well. What can I say? Um, so that with my last pick, that is going to wrap up the podium for this episode. Uh, I think we all had some great, great things to bring to the table. Um, and so we're going to move right into our final segment, kind of wrap up here just behind Omada. Uh, we had a lot of fun filming this first episode of the podcast. Uh, we hope that it goes very well. We have confidence that it will. Um, other than that, we got a sick air fryer in here, and it is turning <laughs> it is turning the vibes of the office. The air fryer is definitely turning the vibes of the office. The air fryer should be a salaried employee. Here I, at agree. I agree. <laughs> I was just talking to my sister yesterday, and she's like, she didn't even realize this, but she's spending like $1,300 a month on Uber Eats out in California, and she just hates cooking. And I said, listen, I need... I need to get you hooked up on an air fryer. Like that, Seriously. It's like, I'm telling you, it'll change your life. It's like, an all-in-one. Yeah. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner if you really want to, you know? Yeah. I literally got home from work last night. And, uh, my mom had cooked like three burgers in the air fryer. Boom, it was waiting for me. I was like, are you kidding Dude. me? Like, that's incredible. I, we've now bought two air fryers, one for the house, one for here. And is it? I don't know if it's like shameful to say that that might be like one of the best investments I've ever made in my life. Like, oh, it is because it does. Say, I, take it from a guy <laughs> who spends an absurd amount of money on takeout food. <laughs> uh, like, I went to the grocery store the other day, bought a bunch of like frozen stuff, and air fryer is king. You know, like it's perfect. Like, so I am literally saving. I spent two weeks worth. I got two weeks worth of stuff. And I spent the same that I would spend in like three days doing takeout food. It's like crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And other than that, uh, I think that pretty much does it, right? Anybody else got any closing thoughts, closing words? Um, if you're what <laughs> if you made it this far in the podcast, thanks for listening. I mean, we hope you we hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, I'll 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 add to that and just say like honestly, we're all here because, you know we love engaging with our customer base. Like we don't want to take our stuff to other people that have control of the experience. Like we want to make sure that like between our content and our products and our brand that we, uh, we do it all for our customer. Like everything we do, we focus on giving the best experience possible, engaging with us and our brand and all the things that we do. And 
honestly, like that is the heart of Amada Golf. You know, Amada means team. We're all doing this together, um, and we're gonna we're gonna make something great over time uh, if we all band together and continue to do stuff. So, to anybody watching this, thank you for everything and anything that you've done to contribute to what we're doing here. Because the, even the idea that we can launch this podcast right now is one hundred percent because of you at home doing what you're doing to support us and our brand. So thank you, and uh, always reach out to us if there's anything we can do uh, to help or engage with you in the future. So that's it. Very well said, very well said, and I will, again, just reiterate thank you very much. It, it means the world to us to uh, even have, like, one supporter, but, you know, I know we have a few out there, and it's it, it's it's an incredible feeling, and we're doing pretty good. And, um, again, thank you. Give us a follow on all so- social medias. We're at Omada Golf, O-M-A-D-A Golf. Uh, we're on TikTok, uh, Instagram, and then you can follow along the podcast for some clips at at T Box Talk Pod, at T Box Talk Pod on Instagram. Uh, we'll be posting some clips there from the podcast and uh, any information about the podcast. Uh, clips will also be posted on Omada Golf, and this will be on our YouTube channel at Omada Golf as well. Again, thank you for listening, uh, and thank you, boys, for preparing well. Uh, I think it went great, and uh, on to the next one. Let's go.